Deuteronomy chapter 9. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day. It dates Deuteronomy. To go to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself. Well, that's, a, that's an encouragement. You're going to go somewhere where they're mightier than you are. Cities great and fenced up to heaven. So on that aspect, the spies were correct. There are big people in that land called giants. There are cities that are up to heaven. A people great and tall, the children of the Atticans, those are giants, whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? This is the words of those spies that we cannot get victory. We're going to go in there and we are grasshoppers. And they'll just step on us and smush us and kill us. That's how Moses begins. Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee. As a consuming fire, our God's a consuming fire, he shall destroy them. He shall bring them down before thy face. So don't worry how big they are. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And God's going to do it. That's what the spies didn't include. The spies went in there on their own merit. We can't do it. That's right. You can't do it. Only God can do it. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said unto thee. God is going to use them as a pawn to get rid of them. But yet God's going to allow them to go in there and with them they're going to conquer. But God's going to give them the power. It doesn't fully happen in the book of Joshua. They give in. Speak not thou in thy heart, after that the Lord thy God has cast them out from before thee, saying, This is not what you're to say, for my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. God did it because of me. Look how great we are. Listen, they had Jewish pride in Jesus' time. We're of Moses' seed. We're of Abraham. And Jesus would reply, If you're of Abraham, you wouldn't seek to kill me. We're the Jews. Jonah, I'm so Jewish, I am not going to go to the Gentiles. Peter, I'm so Jewish, I ain't going to the Gentiles. For my righteous Lord has brought me to possess the land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord does drive them out from before thee. These nations that are in the land that Israel's going to are wicked and vile, and their cup has filled up. Every nation has a cup. Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about, their cup came to the fill, and the angels came and destroyed the city. The children of Babel, their cup filled up, God came in and scattered them. Babylon, the cup got filled up, and God destroyed. There is no Babylon today. Germany got to the point. And now they're just a third, fourth rate nation. No power. America has a cup. England has a cup, and England's cup is getting filler more than America, but America is falling quite behind. And to realize when that cup becomes full, then God has already sent people to warn them. God has sent prophets. God has sent his word to tell you, if you don't get right, Nineveh, the book of Jonah, if you don't get right, down will come the hammer. And these nations are full. Not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thy heart, does thou go to possess their land. Get off yourself. Listen, pride. This is pride. Look who we are. Look what I am. God is so wonderful because I am here. But for the wickedness of these nations, Lord thy, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. You know, God can drive out the English people in England because their sins had reached the full and filled with somebody else. History has shown it. For the wicked of these nations does the Lord thy God drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word 
which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and no Ishmael, no Esau. God promised Abraham, he, pro he promised Isaac, and Jacob, that land is your land. As far as north, it's from south to east, with boundaries set. Genesis 12. Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land, and we saw that last night, to possess it for thy righteousness. For thou art a stiff-necked people. Okay? And I say, when God, Jesus Christ, comes to the nation of Israel, they are high on themselves. They are proud. They are so proud when God shows up, the people who are in charge of the people envy him. As far as that stiff-neckedness, Exodus 32, 9. 33, 3, 33, 5, 34, 9, Deuteronomy 9, 6, verse 13, 10, 16, 2 Chronicles 3, 8, Acts 7, 51. They were so prideful in Acts chapter 7, they chewed the pastor out with death. So don't get on your high horse, God's telling them. He's told them over and over in six short verses, it's not you. It's their wickedness. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. You guys think you're so great? Let's go back and recall your sins. Let's go back and see how much you've given God and Moses a hard time. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt. That's the foundation of their nation. As a group of people. The Passover night. Until you came unto this place. Deuteronomy 9. Right where we are right now. Ye have rebelled against the Lord. Get off yourself. You have done nothing but wickedness since you got here. And in the time of Jesus. They've done nothing but wickedness. They're, trying, they're plotting to kill him. They're plotting to catch him with his words. They're plotting to hire uh, false witnesses. Also in Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. You so great. You know how many times Moses had to pray for the people to God that God would not destroy them? When I was going up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, Exodus 20, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I bowled in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. We talked about that last night. Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Moses is living beyond the capability of man. He's living in the wonder and the power of God. I neither did eat bread nor drink water and he survived. I advise you not to try that. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone. Written with the finger of God. Now how God did that. But God took his finger. He didn't take a pen. He took his finger. And engraved on those stones. And on them was written. According to all the words. Which the Lord spake with you. In the mount out of the midst of the fire. In the day of assembly. We saw that Exodus 20. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights, Moses would have been up there longer. But you guys stay with the 40 days and 40 nights. That the Lord gave me the two tables of stone. And even the table of covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise and get up. Get thee up. Get up, Moses. Moses has no idea what. Get up, Moses. Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. For thy people, which thou brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves, infested with errors, marred. They are quickly turned aside out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Okay? Okay. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people. And behold, it's a stiff-necked people. 
Don't you boast of you. The whole lesson today is don't you boast of yourself. You're wicked. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Let me alone, God speaking, that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. Ooh, you don't want that to happen. And I will make of thee a nation mightier than greater than thou. That blot is your race to destroy. So I turned and came down with the mount, and the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, ye sinned against the Lord your God. You have made you a molten calf. Now let's go back to verse number 12. And have made them a molten image. What's the image? It's a statue. I don't know how big that calf was. But there it is. It's a statue. And ye turn aside quickly out of the way which the Lord commanded you. And I took the two stones and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. If you can only find those pieces. Those are the originals. The originals were broken. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first. Forty days and forty nights again. I did neither eat bread nor drank water. Because of all the sins which ye sin, and doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. You got a pastor that will fall down on his knees and fast because his congregation sins? Will he get to God and pray through the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ for the congregation of this people who have sinned? Moses is a pastor of a great, more than worldly congregation of people, of children of God, the nation of Israel. And they have done him wrong over and over and over. His own family has done him wrong. And the fact is, God's ready to destroy him and wipe him off. And God says, I'll make another nation of you. Moses gets down and he fasts of water and he fasts of bread and he gets to God and says, God, they've sinned. Daniel is under the persecution of death and he still opens up his window towards Jerusalem and he pr pronounces to God the sins of the nation. You're not a pastor of a church. You're not a leader of a church until you get doing this for the people. For I was afraid of the ang I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherein the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. God didn't save your life because of who you are. God did not remove that sin of the calf because of what you are. Because Moses prayed. Moses fasted. Moses interceded. Moses a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ would be a prophet likened unto Moses. And you realize most of our sins, all our sins, are put to God and angers God. And makes God very wrathful at us. And the only pleasement he gets is Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. And the blood atonement. That the, that the son can turn to the father and say, Father, yeah, they're guilty. But the blood. They've confessed. And the Bible says, Father, you've got to forgive and forget. It's under the blood for us today. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron. We didn't read that in Exodus. To have destroyed him. We didn't read that in Exodus. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. You didn't read that in Exodus. You're getting extra information here. And I took your sin, the calf. Did you get that? The molten image, the golden calf, the molten calf is a sin. There it is. The calf which you made, Aaron made it. Aaron took the, the golden earrings, he cast in the fire, and he fastened with a graven tool, but, you know, out came this calf, Moses. 
No, the people the ones that gave, the people that came to Aaron and said, make us gods, and God charges them as making that instrument when it was fashioned by the hands of Aaron. So we're told. I took your sin, the calf which ye have made, and burnt it with fire. The one was the same fire that Aaron made it with. And stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. I cast the dust therein in the brook that descended out of the mount. Ooh, he got rid of it. He didn't keep it. He didn't make a law that, oh, you can have it, right? He got rid of it. At Tiberia, at the Manasseh, and at the Kibberth Hathavir, ye provoked the Lord to wrath. Now, remember, remember, don't say it's you. Don't say how great you are. You're not great. And you know what God can do with my life? He says, see all the things you do wrong? You see all the sins you do? Do you see how bad you are? Don't you dare boast of yourself. Don't you dare take the credit. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Cadiz Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land. See, the Lord said it. Which I have given you. Then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And you believe him not, nor hearken to his voice. Another rebellion. If you guys were so good, you were going from, from Egypt to the promised land without any troubles or problems. But that's not the case. Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, soon to be Joshua, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts. You guys are not so good. Likewise, the Lord sent you a case for you, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you. Then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and they wouldn't go. And you believe him not. You can't get victory over there. We're going to lose. We're grasshoppers. Not hearken to his voice. And you have, re you have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. They got mad at Moses because Pharaoh said, All right, you're going to make more bricks, the same amount of bricks, but I'm not going to give you that straw. And they got angry with Moses. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights. And I fell down at the first, because the Lord has said he would destroy you. And at that, God, God, Moses hits the ground and says, God, in 40 days and 40 nights, he pleads with God for them. 40 days and 40 nights. No food and no water. And that's wonderful. That's a wonder. That's a sign. No man can do that. Moses and Jesus Christ. I believe uh, Elijah. Not Elijah. Uh, yeah, Elijah. But not sure on that 40 days, 40 nights. And I prayed therefore unto the Lord. And said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people. And thy inheritance. Which thou hast redeemed. The blood on the door. Through thy greatness. God is great, long-suffering, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now today for the churches, remember your son. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, they say they're not great, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. They are sinners, they are wicked. Least the land which thou broughtest us out, say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land, which he promised them. And because he has hated them, he has brought them out to slay them in the world. God, it will be a good testimony if you slay them. Moses is stepping out on the limb here. Yet, they are thy people. And you remember the book of Exodus, your people. And Moses would be like, no, God, they're your people. Which thou broughtest out of thy mighty power. You brought him out, God. And by thy stretched out arm. 
God got angry with them because of their sins. God gets angry with us. You know, when you turn around and say, oh, God hates the sin and loves the sinner, Deuteronomy 9 proves that as a lying statement. Because God is angry with their sins, and God is angry with the sinners. And the only way God was to please is there was a mediator between Israel and God, and it was Moses. And there's one mediator between God and man today, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And his blood is what pleads us in our wickedness, in our sinfulness. Mary ain't going to do nothing when it comes to our sins in God. She had her own sins. We learn that pride angers God. And Moses brings up their history to show them, you better not think higher than thou art. Because you know what happened? Their pride brought them to envy, and their envy brought God on the cross.